Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. I'm not a immigration lawyer. I have no expertise in that field, in the field of immigration, but I do like to share information about it, especially if I think it can help other people. And really, it's just to help keep people informed. So if you like what I talk about, I talk about a load of issues, not just one issue. So you can put the thumbs up, thumbs down, you can share, you can subscribe. Yeah, there's quite a few options. You can make comments, you can give feedback, and my email address is there. So if you want to ask me to talk on something, there's the option to do that as well. Anyway, I wanted to talk about um, how Boris is now separating the visa and immigration from the Home Office. Now, this is supposed to be a brilliant idea. It's supposed to make the systems more fairer. But I really think it's just because the Home Office has had such a bad rap. They want people to take the eyes off the Home Office and then think something else is happening, something better. I mean, to be honest, I don't think it's going to make that much difference. We've already got the faulty algorithms in place. We've also already got the biometric systems in place. So what difference is it going to make? Just by saying, oh, I've separated, I've separated the visa and the immigration section and now um, from the Home Office. And now it's going to be two different entities. The Home Office will just concentrate on one thing and the immigration and um, visa system will separate, operate separately. What difference does it make? What people want is just a fair and unbiased system. That's what people want. It doesn't matter that it's in two different buildings. So what it's going to be like, it's going to be run like um, home border security in America. It's going to be run the same way. Homeland Security in America and ICE. It's going to be exactly the same, but in the UK. So you have Homeland Security, which does all the paperwork, and you have ICE that goes out there and does all the dirty work. Basically, that's what it's going to be. So what's the difference? The only difference is that we've got, we've got a building over there, and we've got Operation Nexus, who goes around um, picking up people, you know, in, consulted, in consultation with the police and the Border Patrol. And then you've got the people who do all the administrative work. Big deal. So we're supposed to get excited about that. And then, you know what makes me laugh? Some of these newspapers that say, oh, they're a bit worried because it's tightening control of immigration. How? That is the whole bloody point. They're making it look like it's a bad thing. What's wrong with these people? The whole point of having a system is to reduce immigration. But the only thing I don't like about the system is that people who are entitled to be here, who have done the time, who have served the country, who have paid their dues, they've paid their taxes, they've done everything above board, they've been working, they've been living here and paying taxes. And those are the ones who are penalised. Those are the ones I get worried about. Those are the people who are hanging around in a queue for 18 months to two years, can't get access to public funds. They have been denied a job, a place to live. And these are the people I'm worried about. I don't care about whether or not you have um, the immigration and um, visa in one office separate from the Home Office. Who bloody cares? We just want people treated fairly. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is that people are putting in their applications, they're paying their money, and then they've got an algorithm in their their system that's denying the application. That's what's going on now. And that's not fair. If they haven't got any criminal convictions, if if they've done their time in the country, it should be an automatic award of a visa of some sort. They're already breaking it down from five, well, say from 10 years to five years so they can get extra money out of it. And apparently, you know the visas for um, children, that's rendered unlawful. You know they're charging £1,012 for children's, um, for for children born in the UK, for their citizenship. It has been found in the courts to be unlawful. 
I don't know what's going to happen about it. I don't know if they're going to reduce the fee to just the admin fee or what's going to be what's going to happen. But that was ruled. I don't know if it was yesterday or today. So we have to watch that space because that is the fee. That high fee is what has been prevented a lot of parents, especially single parents, from registering their um, children to become residents or British citizens or whatever. They're actually citizens. So it's not like they're illegal or that their parents are illegal. It's just the fact that their parents have not been able to afford to register them. So Amnesty International and another um, organisation is on it um, and trying to sort that out. Um, let me see what the other organisation is. Um, might as well include it in this. It's all to do with um, immigration and visas and goodness knows what else. So I might as well talk about it. So the court finds mass evidence against Home Office child citizenship fee. The High Court in London has today ruled the 1,012 fee from the Home Office charges children, that, that the Home Office charges children to register as a British citizen is unlawful. Law, lawyers and campaigners have been urging government to act quickly to end its practice of profiteering from the children's citizenship rights. Children born and growing up in the UK have been discriminated against if their parents did not register them or were, or were not qualified to register them. In a landmark case brought forward by the Project for the Registration of Children as British Citizens, in brackets PRCBC, the court found a mass of evidence showing that the fee prevents many children from registering British citizenship, leaving them feeling alienated, excluded, second best, insecure and not fully assimilated into the culture and social fabric of the UK. The current administrative processing cost of a child's registration claim is only £372, but the Home Office uses the remaining £640 to cross-subsidise the immigration system that they've set up. Bloody cheek! Today's judgment requires the Home Office to reconsider the fee and ensures that the children's best interests are taken fully into account in doing so. The court has made clear that where a child has a right to British citizenship, it will generally be in the child's best interest to be registered as British, something the Home Office had denied in evidence to the court. So um, I'm not going to go into too much. I just wanted to read what Maria Patsalos, an immigration partner of Mishcon, Durea, who acted for the project for the registration of children as British citizen? She said, This hugely important case touches the lives of thousands of children, and we have seen it that it affects generations of families living in difficult circumstances. British citizenship is essential for a sense of belonging and securing rights in the UK, and the current fee is creating a barrier which for some is impossible to overcome. So, We've got that, and then we've got this double system here, which um, I have just been telling you about. There is apparently there's little detail on how this move would take effect, but lawyers and campaigners cautioned that while it had the potential to present an opportunity to make the system fairer, their focus was more likely to be on tightening control of the borders. Duh. They don't make me laugh when they say that. So what is the point? That is the whole point. To control the bloody borders. So what's wrong with it? What, like I said, it's about fairness and not discriminating. Like they discriminate against those Africans who they're saying, oh, they might stay over in the country. Oh, they might not want to go back. They, they wouldn't let one in because they had too much money. Then they wouldn't let another one in because he had too little money. Any bloody excuse. That is what I have an issue with. Where it's not a fair system. Providing people reach the criteria. They should be allowed to come into the country. It's either that or a blanket no to everyone. You don't just say, oh, yes to the rich. 
and then no to the regular John Joe and use your, your discretion for a certain class of people and no discretion for those who do not have a lot of money but who are still well within their rights and are kosher and should be entitled, you know, to, to stay in the country. So yes, you have an issue with immigration, but stop bringing bloody people in then. Sort out who you've got here. That's what you need to do. Sort out the people who have been living here for years, paying their taxes, filling up application forms, paying money. That's what you need to sort out. Instead of like Boris Johnson talking about, oh yeah, well, we're going to bring in 31 nurses from abroad when you can't even manage the ones that you've got here already. It really makes a mockery of the system. And that is why people get so angry and hostile. It's not so much the, um, it's not, I don't think, well, it is immigration, but it's the way it's presented. It's the way it's presented. It's presented as though it's a mockery. And that's where the hostility comes in. And that's why people get angry with immigrants. And that's why you have hate wars and hate crime and all that kind of stuff. Because it's the way the media portrays it and they make it look like, oh, yeah, you know, we, you know, we, we're the conservatives. We're going to um, clamp down on immigration. We're going to stop all these immigration immigrants coming in. And on the other hand, you're saying, oh, well, we're going to do an amnesty for so many thousands of illegal immigrants. And we're going to allow 51,000 immigrant nurses to come in the country. They're setting us up. They're causing deliberate animosity. And that is what I do not agree with. If you don't want immigrants in, don't put it out there. Use what you have here already. You've got more than enough. You don't even have, have to go outside the country to get um, nurses. The only reason why you can't get nurses here is because you're a bloody pain in the butt. And you've got all these people that you've got queuing up, waiting to be legitimate, and you're ignoring them. And I'm sure that half of them could fill the quota for the nurse, for the nurses and the doctors. So, you know, sort yourself out at home first, and then you can start thinking about what you can do outside. But their answer is to create havoc and confusion. Let's bring them over. You know, then they can say, oh, well, we're overpopulated. Oh, we haven't got enough houses. Oh, they've taken our jobs. And then next thing you know, people are fighting with each other. It's a setup. I get so annoyed. Anyway, apparently transitioning could be a problem. So, you know. What's going to happen now? They're going to start this new system. All these poor people have been waiting for months for their application to be finalised. Think now, OK, they're at that point now um, where it's going to be finalised. And now they're going to introduce a new system, which puts them back on the back burner again. Tanya Bul Bultman claims that the new department would likely place an intensified focus on limiting numbers, which is likely given the investments in algorithms and biometrics. I don't think she said that. I think that's what I said. Um, but the first bit she said, I think we will probably have similar structure to that of the Department of Homeland Security in America and the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency, ICE, which we, which, like I said, we already have, but it's just not as clear cut. The only thing now is that it's going to be formalised. So to me, like I said, ICE is really UK's Operation Nexus and Border Force officials, which are already operating. The new system could recognise the unfairness of the previous system in controlling and reducing migration, but I don't think it would be much different. Africans, Jamaicans and certain other nationals will still receive biased outcomes based on faulty and pre-constructed algorithms. And that's true. Same way, the same way America is stopping those Jamaicans from coming in. They have the same kind of system that stops Africans and Jamaicans coming in. And then they'll find some excuse why they can't come in. I don't even know why people bother. I guess it's because every now and then someone lucky gets in. 
and they might think that they're that, going to be that lucky one. The culture of the Home Office is about driving numbers down and will be the focus of the Immigration Department and it will be done via, well this must be me, it will be done via a contrived system. We know that it's happened before. Now the Home Office is getting back such a bad rap, it's about taking your eyes off the Home Office and diverting them elsewhere. Um, but both have the same remit. Like the WP, there's no human factor. The DWP, there's no human factor. They don't care how long you've lived in the country. They don't care for your family ties. They don't care about your human rights. It's just about number and it's about reducing them. And that's a sad thing. Like I said, if you're legitimately in the country and you have a valid reason for being here and you've paid your dues, you shouldn't have all this grief. You shouldn't be waiting 18 years and spending all this money. And that's what pees me off. They make them pay all this money and then they reject them. It's like double punishment. They're so mercenary. So maybe the separation might be better. I don't know. I don't know. But Johnson says he doesn't want migrants in the country. But what does a migrant look like? Am I? Well, do I look like a migrant? I mean, how do you tell what a migrant is? Unless you're talking about their accent or the fact, is he talking about their legal status or is he talking about their appearance? And that is what's confusing. That's what confuses especially um, racist people. They don't, they don't distinguish between people who have a legal right to be in the country and illegal immigrants or migrants or whatever they want to call them. They put you all in the same barrel. You all look the bloody same. So, you know, when they talk about a migrant, for, as far as they're concerned, I'm a bloody migrant. I've got colour. It doesn't matter that I'm born here. You know what I mean? And that's what they do. They create that animosity. And it's unnecessary. Be pacific. Call people what they are. Are you talking about people, when you're talking about migrants, are you talking about people who have come up from outside the country and how do you determine who is a migrant and have some kind of um, system in place to identify that but as it is now as long as you're black you're, you're considered an immigrant and it shouldn't be like that but it is Anyway, um, what else did I want to close off with? So, all of those waiting for the extensions, I've already said that. Joe Owens, Brexit Programme Director at the Institute for Government, said that creating a separate department for borders and immigration had the potential to help rebuild public trust in the immigration system, but that if not carried out effectively, it could be damaging. The best case scenario is this is a well thought through planned move which addresses some of the structural issues in the way the Home Office works at the moment. The worst case scenario is that they drag and drop the exact same system and the same structures into a new department and rather than fixing anything they just disrupt all of the work that's going on there. So I think that's all I'm going to say for now. Sorry I went on so long, I didn't really mean to. But thank you for watching. Don't know if you made it to the end, but have a good weekend. Bye bye.